be here this morning and in the beginning I would like to declare my faith by saying my faith is bigger than my fear. Can we please all say together? My faith is bigger than my fear. Praise God. My today's theme is welcome. As you have seen that I mostly encourage children, the young children, to come and say a prayer. It means I am welcoming them. So please come and do the prayer. Today I would like to share a reason behind it. 17 years ago somebody welcomed me to pray in this country. And this is one of the reason why I am standing here and maybe why God is using me today to say a word of God, to share his messages and to teach and to learn. As you all know, when I came in this country, I had many problems. And one of the problems we mostly face is a language barrier. And I was living with an English couple a dad and mom and they loved me so much a very first night or second night when I was with them we had a time of prayer before we go to the bed and at that time of prayer Papa Joseph his name was Joseph he asked me to pray and everybody was sitting there and I was so shocked that why he asked me he might not to know that I don't know how to pray. So there were two things in my mind. A very first thing that maybe I cannot pray in English because it wasn't my way of praying back home. We used to pray in Urdu. And the second thing was in my mind that if I say no, I will not pray, he will not be very happy. I might be kicked out of his house. <laughs> I got a good place to stay. So why I will disobey? But the, on the top, I was thinking if I will not pray, maybe God will not be happy with me. So I forced myself to pray in my broken English. I still say many things in my broken English, but the very first thing I did for myself and for the Lord is to pray. Today I would like to encourage you as a parent. We have children and they could have different talents. If somebody is praying and if somebody is not praying that doesn't mean that the other child has not the other talents. I can tell you that I don't have a talent to sing. If I sing Many people don't like it. So I am not welcomed to sing. So you can say that I can be a good uh, prayer warrior. Many people are prayer warriors and I can be a preacher. Uh, I've been told many times that I'm a preacher. So I stick with what I have. But it doesn't mean that I don't try myself of singing. So we have children, we can always encourage them as a congregation. We can welcome them. If you would say to me that this child has prepared a song, then what we can do, we can give five minutes to that child. I can speak five minutes less. I don't have any problem. If you would ask me to speak only five minutes, I can conclude it. I'm learning this way. But we need to encourage each other. If somebody else would like to do something, we can do it. We can see that how growth comes because that thing I have seen in my own life Maybe that's why God showed me and he made me remember that I welcome. So today we are talking about welcome and we welcome people who have come here first time or who hardly comes here. My brother is sitting here. I'm very pleased to see you and uh, uh, brother Wilson is sitting here. He says that uh, he don't get chance to hear me. And today God has brought him here. God is God's plan. So we welcome you as a congregation. We welcome all of you. Either we don't know you or we know you. We love everybody. 
and that's what the greatest thing I love about our church and all the churches that we welcome all the people no matter what they come from, where they have been, what religion they have, we always welcome. Today we see that Jesus Christ is welcome. But before he's going to Jerusalem, he has to stay at certain village. A very normal story. We, we should not complicate the story actually. Jesus is two miles away and he has to go in the village. <coughs> he is in the village, he has to go in Jerusalem. And he knows what will happen to him. He will be persecuted and he will be crucified. But he has to do what Lord, the God has prepared for him. The plan of God has to go through. So he's staying there and in the morning we can see that he sent two of his, two of his disciples and told him that go and go to the certain place and you will find a baby donkey, a colt there and ask that, that I will need that donkey and they will send it to you. One thing about welcoming somebody, it can be good in both ways. We can welcome somebody but they're in the same crowd who don't like it. And that is happening in Jerusalem, that is happening in time of Jesus Christ. Because many people like you and I were welcoming Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the main figure in the Bible. Today I would like to encourage you that you have to think about it that this Gospels are written by four different authors. And why is, like, why is like that? We can see that there are 66 books in the Bible written by 40 different authors. Five of the books written by Moses and then we see David has wrote some books. King Solomon wrote two books. Jeremiah has written two books as well. And in the New Testament we see St. Paul, he wrote half of the New Testament, about 13 letters and books we can say. But here we can see that a focus is on Jesus Christ and four different men are writing about Jesus Christ. A question can come in your mind and you have been asked many times and many times people say that your Bible is changed. Because they quote it from different scriptures. They quote it from different gospels and say that this is written here, but it is not written here. This is a confliction, conflict. Then how you can satisfy them, how you can satisfy yourself that why it is like that. God could have one great author to write the biography of Jesus Christ, but he used four different men. We know that Matthew, Matthew was a Jewish collector. He was a very rich person as well and he knew Jewish culture. So when Matthew is writing, he is writing for Jewish people. And when Luke is writing, Luke was a doctor and a Gentile, a only writer who, was, who is Gentile in the, in the writing of Bible. So he's writing for you and I. Today is very similar. If somebody has to know about English culture, I will ask Jenny to please come forward and tell us about English culture. I cannot stand here and speak and tell about English culture, English food, English manners. That's why we are mixed. If you have to ask me, I can tell you about uh, Pakistani Asian culture. If you talk about particularly India, I can ask uncle to please come forward, uncle Anil to please come forward and tell us about India, how it works. So that is why God has used different people to spread the gospel all over the world. Now the focus is on Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. There is a wrestling match is going on and you have to watch that match. And that match is watched by three different people. The very first one was a wrestler. 
when he will write about the wrestling mat he will say there was a fight there was a neck lock head lock jack lock because he's talking about his language his terminology so he is right like that the next person is a doctor who is watching a wrestling match when he watches a wrestling match he will say that when the head was hit it it might be a brain injury or a broken leg or something like that he is saying something from medical point of view and there is a poet or a singer there and when that person has to write about the mat he will say that the blood was flowing and there was a pain on his face because poets think differently that is the reason for different authors are used for Jesus Christ so each of us can understand you might have a medical background you might have interest in poetry that is how we can understand even in the gospel when Jesus Christ is welcome in mark there is nothing negative in this passage but when we see Matthew Luke and John there are few negative things some people are welcoming Jesus but some are not happy in Matthew people are asking who is this man who is coming on donkey and they said that he is a prophet Jesus Christ from Nazareth and then we go and see in Luke there are certain Pharisees there when people were welcoming Jesus Christ but the Pharisees were not happy today I believe we are not Pharisees we <laughs> welcome Jesus in our lives Pharisees says to Jesus Christ himself even he is coming as a king and he is busy and he is on donkey and Pharisees went close to him and he said that quiet your disciples let them shut their mouths but Jesus is saying that if they were be silent the very stones would cry out Jesus answered them and then we see in John people are still welcoming Jesus Christ but certain people are not ready to welcome Jesus Christ they say that see the whole world is going after him they are talking to each other because they don't want the name of Jesus Christ would be spread today we need to think about it it is something similar happening even nowadays we are welcoming Jesus Christ we are welcoming God but certain people are persecuting Christians certain people are not happy today if I welcome you I welcome Jesus because Jesus lives in us we are temple of Jesus Christ and then we go further and we need to learn how we can welcome Jesus in our lives today we have seen how Jesus was welcomed in Jerusalem but if we personally welcome Jesus in our life what would be a way and if we welcome Jesus in our life what would be the benefits let me share a small story with you in Luke chapter 10 verse 38 the Bible says Jesus was going to Jerusalem it was a different event Jesus was going to Jerusalem and on his way he had to stay a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed Jesus in her house that time Martha welcomed and we all know that beautiful story Martha Mary and Lazarus the siblings they were brother and sisters so they welcomed Jesus Christ today you and I are welcoming Jesus in our lives in our hearts in our houses or not and we know that because they welcomed Jesus and Jesus became friend to them he is friend to all of us he loves all of us but for deep intimate relationship we need to welcome Jesus somehow in our lives 
and did Jesus did something very amazing for their family. We all know that Lazarus died and Jesus waited four days and he went. And I always encourage people that the very shortest verse in the Bible is John chapter 11 verse 35 where the Bible says Jesus wept. Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus who died. So you can see if we welcome Jesus, he become friend to us and when we weep, he weeps with us. Sometimes we think that I'm going through this wilderness. Sometimes we think that Jesus, God has left me. He cannot see that I am serving him, I am honoring him, I go to church, I give my tithe, I have good attitude towards people. But I'm going through many afflictions, problems, sickness. <coughs> we see that we say that Jesus cannot see my suffering. Jesus see my suffering, and if you see my suffering, take me out of that. But at the very moment, whatever is going on in your life, Jesus knows. Because even before dying Lazarus, Jesus knew that he is sick. And he told even his disciples that our brother, our friend Lazarus has slept. Jesus knows everything. And here we see on Palm Sunday when Jesus told his disciples, go. Even Jesus told them that what they will say. They will say that why are you doing this? Why are you untying the cold, the baby donkey? And Jesus even gave them an answer. Tell them that Lord needs it. So today if Jesus Christ is sending you and I to any work, any mission, He knows from A to Z. He knows what will happen. We just need to follow the instructions. <coughs> Maybe sometimes I don't know my destination. I cannot clearly see where I would be. But if I trust upon Jesus Christ, He sends me there. Today He has sent me here. I was in big stress, I should admit that. And the very first thing I came and asked Jenny that it's not a family service today. I was thinking that it's a family service today and family service would be very new for me and I did not prepare myself that fully for family service. But Jesus planned that thing for me. So if we just take stress that I will go and this will happen, that will happen, oh, I should see a way out from it. I should ask Tyrone to please lead the worship today and I'm sick, something like that. Then it won't help. Jesus helps you. And it's, it's just a way how to instructions would have taken in our lives. And then we can see people said, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They admitted that Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is coming in our lives. They are welcoming Him. We all know the meaning of Hosanna. Hosanna means praise Him. Praise Jesus Christ. Another meaning of Hosanna is save us. So once we welcome Jesus Christ, once we praise Him, He saves us. If it would have been a family service, I might have told you about the ways to read the Bible. I still tell you that if you have a passage and you have some difficult words in it, in this passage, we have a word Jerusalem, Bathphage, Bethany, Jesus, David. If you don't know the meanings, then go and find the meanings. Jerusalem means city of peace. Bathphage means young house of fig. Fig is a fruit. Bethany means a house of fig. Hosanna means praise Him and save us. And Jesus means Savior. And David means beloved. If you only know the meanings of the scripture, most of the message you will understand by yourself. 
next week or maybe week after you might ask me again the meaning of these words I would not able to tell you I'm telling you in advance many times I try to learn the meanings but then I forget but still we keep trying we keep because this word of God I always tell people if God don't want us to have us have this word of God in us we cannot have we can be a doctor, engineer, a scientist, reading many books, memorizing everything, but without the Holy Spirit, we cannot memorize even a one single word. Because this is the word of God. He cannot misuse it. Many people are still misusing it, but if we love God and we know God wants us to use for a benefit of people and for this work, then it has to be used properly. In the end, please welcome Jesus in, a, in your life and have a blessed life. Once we welcome Him, I'm pretty sure and I know that I'm witness of that, that we will have a very blessed life like Mary Martha. So may God bless you all and keep using you for His glory. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.